gathered here for worship and praise service to God, our Father, and our Creator. We are happy to see each of you with your smiling faces. We are sure that you came with joy in your heart and that you find it a, a pleasure to worship and praise God. We want to thank all and welcome all who will be worshiping with us online today. And we pray that you will be blessed as we are blessed in our assembling together. So at this time, we're going to ask that our deacons will come forth with our scripture and our prayer, and we will continue in our worship service. Amen. morning our scripture reading will be coming from the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And we'll begin with verse number one. Let me read. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by faith the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God, so that things which were seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, <coughs> by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and by it he being dead yet speaking. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had a testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it was impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I read to you from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Let us bow here in prayer. Gracious Father, we come this morning with thanksgiving in our heart, Lord, thanking you for all the wonderful blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. Realizing, Lord, that we haven't done all the things that you have asked us, commanded us to do, Lord, but yet you continue to just watch over us and bless us, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for waking us with a portion of health and strength, Lord. Activities of our limbs. Lord, it's so many things that you bless us with that we just take for granted, Lord. Bless us where we will be mindful that you don't have to do anything, Lord. You don't you you don't have need no one to help you make a decision, Lord, because you created us. You know all about us, Lord. And we don't have to tell you the things that's going on, Lord, because you already know. You said, ask, and it will be given. So right now, Lord, we're asking you for more peace on this earth, Lord. We ask that you would just bless the, the ones that are, have disturbed mind, all of this mass shooting going on, Lord. We know that you're in charge and you're in control of all things. Man. So we're just coming to you asking you to just touch our hearts and our minds, Lord, where we will live a life that pleases you and not man. Lord, we come right now 
asking that you would just touch those that are in Congress and, and the representative law where they will make choices that will benefit the people and not them because they are chosen electors that are that the people put in Lord and let us be mindful that if they're not doing what they supposed to do then when we go to the voting polls Lord that we will just not put them back in office Lord Lord we ask you to just bless our president his cabinet members all that are in leadership position, Lord. Bless them and just let them know that they're in that position, but you're in charge. Bless our pastor this morning. Continue to watch over him. Bless him physically, financially. You know what he deal with every day, Lord. Give him the strength to just keep moving on for you, for you, Lord. Help each one of us to realize that it's not about us, but it is all about you. Love has everything to do with it because you are love. So we just thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who hung, bled, and died so that we will have life and have life abundantly. We ask that you just bless those that are less fortunate than us. Bless us when we, we will be a blessing to those, all those that we can, Lord. Just because we have, we may have more, Lord, it, it doesn't mean that you favor us more, Lord, because you're God that reign on the just as well as the unjust. And we just want to say thank you. Forgive us for our sins, creating us a clean heart and renewing in us a right spirit. Bless the one that's going to preach your holy word, Lord. Dip him down in your treasures, Lord, and, and allow him to come up and just preach boldly, Lord, what you have given him, Lord. Bless the one that's going to receive it, Lord. Don't let it be fall on deaf ear, Lord. Let us go out and, and, and do what the words say. Let us be doers and not just hearers. Lord, when we come down to the end of our journey, Lord, we ask that you would just please give us a seat in our kingdom. For these prayers and blessings in your darling son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask that you turn to hymn number 120. In your hymnal and stand and sing with us. We sing because he lives.
participation in our devotional worship and praise service. It sounds like you are where you want to be. And we are happy to have you here and to be participants in our worship service that God may be honored, that we may be blessed by giving of ourselves to worship. This morning, our announcements are that on tomorrow evening at 6.30, we will be hosting the Canaan and Pickhamville Congress of Christian Education Banquet. And the participants in this banquet will be the youth of the Canaan and the Pickenville district. We have 16 churches. How many participants we'll have, we don't know yet. But we know we'll have some participants in this church. We have some band members who are going to perform. Our youth choir is going to perform, and we do have a gymnast in our congregation who will perform. So we would like for our church to be well in attendance to support our youth. Also, immediately after service, we will have rehearsal with our youth who are going to be participating at the banquet. So will you parents be a little patient with us as we get them together after services? We are expecting our adults who have been assigned certain foods to be prepared to have them ready and be there at least by 5.30 or make sure they are sent by someone to be there at 5.30. So when the guests arrive, we won't be bringing in food and doing things, but we'll be ready to entertain. So let us be mindful of that. Amen. We want to give recognition to our associate ministers, to their wives, to our deacons and their wives, to the mother of our church, Sister Hodges, and to our missionary president, Sister Gardner. And we know that you would really make them proud if you participated and they were there. We are expecting our associate ministers to be there because we're going to have a special table for me and them and their spouses. <laughs> so the dress code is casual, semi-formal, <coughs> or formal. So you come any way that you'd like to be dressed. We want you to be comfortable. We are going to be in a well, cool place, and you will like the atmosphere because it is conducive <coughs> to the Holy Spirit. We've already been there. We prayed for it, and we are praying for a great time in the name of the Lord. Now, our prayer list, if there are no other urgent announcements, we will, we will let you know on next Sunday about our Vacation Bible Day. 
which will be in next month. And it's, it's near the end of the month before school starts. Uh, but on our prayer list, we have Brother Sharon Cockrell, Sister Patricia McBride, Indira Salters, Eugene Tuggle, Marcus Smith, the Hodges family, the Wesley family, Frank Henry Jr., Frank Henry Sr., and Johnny Wilson. And our sick and shut in, we have Sister Catherine Lee, Bonnie Partridge, the Wright and the Whitfield family, the Somerville things that were not called. We want our minister to include them in the prayer. Also, as we come to pray for those who are on our prayer list, who are sick and shut in, those who are in bereavement, and we'd like for him to bless our offering during that prayer also. And we're going to continue on with our worship service. We ask you to pray as he prays. Amen. When the church prays, then God moves on his throne in heaven. Amen. He said, my house should be called a house of prayer. So let us all pray as Reverend King come and lead us into our public prayer. good to be in the house of the Lord. Before I pray, I want to ask the church to pray for a young man whose name I entered on our prayer list. And the reason I ask that is because my niece called me and her son was murdered. And this young man had just gotten out of prison and wanted to live with his parents, and they wouldn't allow it. He went home, got his gun, killed his mother, father, and my nephew. And she called me and asked me to pray for him and have the church to pray for him also. I mean the young man that did the killing. <coughs> pray for him because he needs our prayers. Let us pray. Father God, I come now in the most humblest and gracious way that I know how. First of all, I come thanking you for your darling son, Jesus Christ, whom you gave to us that we may have life and have it more abundantly. I thank you, Lord, for all the many, many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We are here today looking good and come with open hearts and open minds to serve you and to be a service to our fellow man. Lead us and guide us and strengthen us, Lord. Bless each and every one that's under the sound of my voice. Bless our world, Lord. Bless the ones that we have voted for and elected and put in a leadership position. Give them the wisdom and the knowledge and the courage to stand up and take a, a godly stand. Lord, not, not be so much as what sin is for me, but how can I be a help to the world? Lord, bless us to be a blessing. You have put something in us and you have given us a, a mission is to let the world know that there is a God who sets high and looks low. Lord, and if he says, I will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. 
bless us, Lord, is to not to depend so much on our on what we can do, but what you can do through us. And Lord, we know when you are in charge, everything goes according to your plan and to your purpose. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for every day that you allowed us to walk on this earth. Because, Lord, we don't, uh, we don't deserve anything but because you are a good God, a loving God, our Holy Father, and one who promised to never leave us or never forsake us. But you be with us even when our ups and our downs, when we fall down, Lord, we can get up again and rise again. Stand tall for you. Let our light shine that men and women may see your good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Lord, be with us today. Be our strength and our comforter. Be our guide, Lord. Lead, guide us, and direct our lives that we may be the men and women that you have called us to be. This prayer I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
God be the glory. All glory belongs to God, who is the author and finisher of all our faith. It's a blessing to see you here this morning. Thank the Lord for keeping his hand on us. Because we could have been on a cooling board. Bible said when he calls, we all will answer. And, and we need to work on our soul salvation. Amen. We greet you in the mighty name of Jesus, who are all in all. We thank you for your presence here this morning. Amen to our pastor, Reverend Benny W. Henry, our deacons, our mothers. We greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And I just want to give you a word of encouragement. All right. Want to let us look at ourselves as people of God. Yeah. Want to make sure you're not straddling the fence. Right. Y'all hear me this morning? You, you got some Christians like to straddle the fence. So much is going on in the world now. Some of us are straddling the fence because we're not in the word. And we don't want you to compromise the word of God. Pastor hit on it a little bit last Sunday. But if you'll be so kind you that are streaming in from us, turn your Bibles to the book of 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, 7 through the 10th verse. 2 Corinthians, 12th chapter, 7 through the 10th verse. We're not going to be long, but we're going to give you a word. If I come down your street, don't get upset. It is what it is. Even on me. Amen? See, a lot of people think just because ministers preach, it has nothing to do with us. That's a lie. A lot of times it has a whole lot to do with some of us. Amen? When you have found the second book of Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the seventh verse you will find these holy words written. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Y'all hear me this morning? The messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice mm -hmm. that it might be departed from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmary that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in informity, in reproach, in necessity, in persecution, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, I'm strong. Let me say that again. For when I am weak, that's when I'm strong. Glory be to the reading of God's most holy word. You may be seated. All during the week, this has been in my spirit. 
one thing about people of God, especially our leaders and people who work in the church, we have to be careful of our walk. Y'all hear me this morning? Because every now and then some of us get caught up in who we think we are. The word of God says in that last day, he's going to call us servants. I don't care how many degrees you got, what you've done, God already has that on record. For he knows who his children are and what we've done. Not only that, he has given us many gifts to work in the ministry that he has given us. I hear people say all the time, my ministry is not your ministry. The ministry of Jesus Christ. And and we just people who are supposed to draw people to Christ. But we can't draw people to Christ if you're self-righteous. Oh, y'all hear me now. Y'all getting quiet. You can get quiet early, but I'm coming down there. You can't draw people to Christ being uppity. You can't draw people to Christ just because you've been in the church 30 years. Huh? There was a man on the cross. And you know what he said? He said, we, we know what we've done. Huh? We have two cents and a dime. He said, but you appear. And he asked Jesus to remember him. So regardless how long you've been in the church, you can fall. Y'all hear me? Look what the word of God said. He said, unless I should be exalted upon measures through the abundance of the revelation, Paul was special. Very intelligent, well-schooled and educated. One day God had to get his attention. He was trying to destroy God's program and the church. And the Lord had to get his attention. And he told him, you can't kick against the prick. You can't kick against God's program. You may have your agenda. But God has a greater agenda. He wants us to be like it was in the beginning. Pure. No sin. No hatred. Not anything. Paul was special. God had favor on Paul. He allowed Paul to experience some things no man had experienced. Here the Apostle Paul describes an astonishing experience where he was transported in a sense to the third heaven. Some people call it paradise. The only other person did that was John. Everybody don't get the opportunity to experience certain things unless you're really holy. Y'all hear me? Because a lot of us still have a lot of carnalities in us. We say we go to church, but we still got some stuff in us. Because the devil wants to try to bring us back. And every now and then, some of us digress back to that thing. Wish that you can go back. Y'all hear me now? I know sometimes, especially these young folks, watch television and see all the dancing and the party. They got so much new liquor now. I'm not mad because I ain't get a chance to drink none, but <laughs> every now and your mind said, no, why didn't have that back there when I was there? <laughs> Only thing we had was that old folks liquor, corn stuff. But see, any man with his hand on the plow looking back is not fit for the king. Yeah. Y'all having a man, yeah, I'm coming down this street.
So Paul had these gifts, and, and Paul was kind of, like my wife called me sometimes, cocky. <laughs> you know, Lord bless you with certain gifts, and, and some people kind of put yourself above things. Right. I've always been competitive, but every now and then you have to watch yourself. <laughs> Even in your walk as a child of God, you have to be careful what you say to people. Huh? You can't be up and look down. Huh? Every now and then, some of us who are in this way, and what they mean in this way, in this walk of Christ, sometimes we forget who we are in Christ. So we have to be careful of how we go, how we talk to people. How we treat people. And Paul said, you know, I could boast about this thing. So God been mighty good to me. Oh, yes. See, some of us have gifts of things you want to talk about. Yes, I can do this. Oh, Lord, I can do that. I'm the best in this. I'm the best. In, but Paul had to watch himself. Just like we have to watch ourselves. Be careful how you try to present yourself to the world. We're supposed to draw people to Christ, not run people away. Y'all hear me? And sometimes God has to do something to us to keep us humble. He's done it to me a whole lot of times. Sometimes he can embarrass you. Sometimes he can bring you down. You can be up one day, down another day. You can get so sick, you wish you had never heard of a disease. See, God can do that to keep you humble. Because some of us, we have to be broke down. So Paul said, lest I should be exalted above measure. I mean, he went over and above who he was as a child of God. He was doing great things, but Paul said, I have to watch it. That's why we call this thing a relationship. See, when you have a relationship with the Lord, he knows you. Paul said he knows. He knows how to chastise us. Have you ever been chastised? Anybody ever got a whipping from the Lord? Huh? So Paul says, through the abundance of revelation, God has favored him. He said, that was given to me a thumb. Every now and then the Lord has to give us a thumb to let us know. Down. So we don't be so high. Looking down. Not only did he do it to Paul, but he'll do it to anybody. Huh? He also did the same thing to Job. But Job wasn't a proud person, but God will use certain things in our life that he may receive glory. Huh? He can use anything that he can receive glory. He can use your sickness. Your disappointments. Things that happen in your life that he may get the glory. Y'all hear me this morning. Don't get upset when things happen to you unless you think it's strange. As you go through trials and tribulations. Wonder why you can't get a penny. You probably don't need a penny. You wouldn't know what to do with the money no way. Most people get too much money. Lose the soul. I think about it sometimes. I always say something. Oh, yes, if you can scratch off one thing, because she's lucky. You scratch off one thing, we hit a lot of about three or four million. I don't have to worry no more. But we probably wouldn't know what to do with it. Huh? Some of you look at other people and see how gifted they are. Lord, if I could do that, I'd do this and I'd do that. You have to be careful what you ask for. Huh? 
Y'all looking at me strange. But Paul said, I have to watch myself. He said, because I'm all, I already boast about things. But he boasts about the glory of God. That's why I love the pastor. He don't mind dancing for the glory. Of God. He knows what the Lord has done for him. He's had enough things in his life that he knows how to stay level-headed. Y'all hear me? Y'all getting mighty quiet. But look what he said. He said, the messenger of Satan buffeted me. All sickness, diseases, and things that happen in your life is not of the devil. Lord, the devil is there. Devil made me. Devil got me this. Quit lying on the devil. Every now and then, God allowed the devil to test you. Just as he did Job. He said, have you considered my servant? Listen to that word. Servant Job. So he allowed the devil to do some things to Job. Here Paul is suffering the same thing. He said, it was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. But God put something in him to give us, get us attention. And every time that thing mess with it, it let him know it's not in my control. It's not in my power. I'm going to stay like here. And, I'm gonna... and sometimes God has to do that to us. Huh? See, sometimes some of us get conceited. Oh, please, let me talk about it. Some of us get conceited. Self-righteous. Have our own agenda. So God put this son in power to keep him in check. Every now and then I have to keep myself in check. See, I talk mess all the time. <laughs> Y'all know me. I'm a very competitive person. When I first started playing the instrument, they didn't know what I was going to do with it. That instrument was my girlfriend. When I was in school, every day I practiced. Sometimes I cut class to practice. I got so good I was kicking on seniors. So when I went to college, I already had a rep when I went to Southern. I could play. But see, every now and then God would do some things to me to let me know I ain't the only one. Y'all hear me? You, you, you not the only. I seen some homeboys that could play. Don't even know how to read. <laughs> so I had to watch myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had that thorn in my side. Yeah. I ain't the only one out here can play an instrument. Yeah. Preachers have to be the same way. You ain't the only one yeah. that can preach a little bit. Yeah. You're not the only one that's yeah. gifted. Yeah. Choir members, you're not the only one that can sing a solo. Yeah. Sing the birds out of trees. See, your God always got somebody on the side to take your place. Y'all hear me this morning? Don't you think you it? So, he will put a thorn in your side. Sometimes you may have to get embarrassed. I used to hate this. This was my mama. My mama knew how I was. And every now and then, you know when you're a baby like that, they'll pinch you on the leg, uh -huh. make you holler, tell you don't cry. Uh -huh. <laughs> every now and then, she had to tell me, and y'all know me, this ain't no secret. Mama, you had to tell you, you better watch your mouth. And she knew how to fix it. And that's what's wrong with Young parents now, y'all don't know how to fix it. Y'all coming down the street. See, my mama fix it right then, right there. 
They didn't wait till you got out of church. Some of them will do it right in the church in the pews. Preacher would just keep on preaching because they know what's going on. My mama take you to the choir room. And then she make you get back up in the choir and sing. And I used to tell her, I can't sing in the school district. But sometimes God would do things to bring you back down where you're supposed to be. What I'm telling you this morning is this thing might be the thing to help you get to the kingdom. Sometimes Jesus intervened that you may make it to the kingdom. Because if he would just leave you alone, many of us will go to hell. Y'all hear me this morning? Oh, y'all getting mighty quiet now. You know how far you will go with things. What's wrong with these young folks now? They don't get enough whooping. That's right. You need some beat down. Can't wait no more till they get nine and ten. You got to catch them while they're babies. So that they know it's discipline in the house. When I was growing up, I was more afraid of my mama than the police. I'd rather for you to call the popo than to call my mama. Her name was Liz. And she used to do a little sub teaching. And back in the day, uh, they'll come up to the school and put something down on them. See, they can't do that now. You go to jail, see. And that's what's wrong with a lot of our young folk. So Paul said, a thorn in the flesh the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I get too proud. And he said, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice. Yes. Have you ever been through some things that you don't know how you're going to fix it? Uh-huh. Have you ever been so sick? <laughs> you think it don't have no remedy? Mm-hmm. Y'all remember me for a while. A couple times I had to bring a cane up here. I mean, there's about three of us up here walking on canyons. <laughs> <laughs> but God will do those things to keep you honest. But you know what? He said he will never leave you, nor forsake you. See, my wife spoke to one of our church members. See, he put people around you to bless you. And to keep you. I'm glad that people, we got some people here that come straight down your street, they'll tell you about it. I love people who used to call me to the side and admonish me. Didn't like it at the time. But you know, those people saving my soul. Because they're telling you like it is. They ain't trying to sweet talk nothing. That's why we try to keep from hurting people's feelings. There's nothing wrong with hurting some feelings. To keep you humble. Might keep you from going to hell. I like people who just straight up. Might hurt your feelings, but it'll help you. Jesus was straight up. When he spoke to people, he didn't go around the corner. He was straight up. Paul said, I besought the Lord. Sometimes you have to go in prayer to keep you level here. Sometimes you have to stay on your knees. Huh? To mature and grow in your walk. Sometimes you have to have a closer relationship with the Lord because you know when you're not right. A lot of people say, well, he didn't know no better. That's a lie. Most of the things I've done, I knew better. I'm just talking about me now. When I look back on some of the things that happened in my life, what nobody thought but mine. And what's so bad about it, I knew better. It's a shame to go to hell and you know better. Y'all hear me? 
We know Paul knew. And that's why he knew what was happening to him. He said, for this thing I besought the Lord. He prayed for the Lord to keep me humble. Pray to the Lord that I had to watch some of the things I do in my walk in Christ. He loved the Lord. He glorified the Lord. But he wanted that thing moved. It's good to have somebody to have some control on how you go. I thank the Lord for older people. One thing about the older people, they just tell it like it is. I love y'all for that because that's pretty much who raised me, older people. Young folks, we got to live with us and bust. Older people been there and done that. I love those old teachers we had because they were just straight up. Where I came from, if you didn't have it, they'll tell you you didn't have it. And then they'll call your mama. And you'll spend some time with those teachers. But look what Paul said. After praying to the Lord, having a relationship with the Lord, he said the Lord told him that my grace is sufficient. I'm so glad for grace and mercy. Many of us wouldn't be here now if it hadn't been for God's grace and mercy. See, his grace covers you. His grace looks after you. So by his grace, many of us are here today. We could have went down a bad railroad track, but his grace intervened on our behind. His grace strengthened us. Look what Paul said. He said, for my strength. So you can't have nothing without the Lord. Y'all hear me? Had not been for the Lord, a lot of things, you wouldn't be where you are. Couldn't have went to school without the grace of the Lord. Couldn't have had the jobs we've had. If it had not been for the grace of the Lord. Grace opened doors that you couldn't see. Many of us are really blessed because of his grace. Yes, we might have put in the work. Yes, we might have went to school. Yes, we might have learned a lot, but it was his grace and his favor on us that put us where we are right now. And you can't have one without the other. You can't have grace without mercy. That's why we walk the way we walk now. One of these days, grace and mercy are going to bring us into the kingdom. Not by what we've done, but how Christ intervened on our behalf to keep us level-headed and in control. Paul said, most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities. Some folks whine about what's happening to them. You ever seen people whine about everything? If you ask the Lord, I just don't know. Lord, I've been hurting all week. Lord, what you going to do for me? God is good. He'll come see about you. But he wants to get the glory out of whatever you're going through. You might have had some disappointments in your life. Lost a job, but it's how you go through those things and those trials and tribulations. That's why he told Paul, my grace. Y'all hear me? He said, my grace. Not your grace. Not your agenda. My grace is sufficient. Because when you fall, guess what? He'll come to your aid. When you don't think he's going to make it. He'll come to your aid. Look what Jesus did for us on the cross. On a Friday evening. By the grace of God. Man was about to lose everything. 
He had a thorn in his side. Many have fallen because they couldn't hold. As loud all men unto me. Then they put him in a closed grave. Thought it was over with. But I'm so glad God gave what's sufficient for us. Look at us now. But we have a right to the tree of life. And early, 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 from the morning, got up with all power in his hand. Whatever you're going through, his grace is sufficient. His grace will bring you through. Don't worry about what people say about you. Just know that his grace is all you need to get through this journey. Don't worry about some of those songs in the sky. They're there just to let you know that there is a God. Sits high, looks low. I'm glad for this thing that keeps me humble. It's all right this morning. All of us ought to have a thorn in our side to let you know that Jesus is there to cover you, that you won't go above measure. God bless you, and God keep you. Doors of the church is open. Doors of the church is open.
Yeah. <laughs> 
Did y'all hear what she say? She said, all of my help, not some of my help, but all of my help come from the Lord. His grace <laughs> is sufficient. <laughs> His grace is our help <laughs> in time of need. His grace <laughs> is sufficient when we got a throne in the flesh. When we sick, His grace is sufficient. Raises us up. Amen. When our hearts have been broken, His grace <laughs> means broken heart. Amen. Thank God for His grace this morning. Only my help. Not some of my help. All my help. All my help. I want you to know you can't do nothing on your own. If he don't bless you, you can't do nothing. You can't open your eyes if he don't give you grace and mercy. Thank him this morning. Thank him this morning for grace and mercy. Amen. 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 We have Sister Smith here on my right side, and we got Brother Collie in our audience. And we want both of them to come to the front. Sister Smith, would you come? The, these are two persons that God has added to our congregation. And we have not, we have not given them the right hand of fellowship. Amen. I'm so happy. <laughs> I tell you, I get excited about baptized. I baptized both of them during the pandemic. You know, when folks scared to come to church, children come to get in the water. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Jesus this morning. The word will do what God said it will do. Amen. Acknowledge, baptize, and confess. <laughs> Those are words come from the grandmother of this one here. <laughs> the ABC. <laughs> She said, you know the ABC. Now, we have sanitizer. If you want to use it before or after, we have an usher here. We got one going to be here before you come. Would you come stand here, Sister Usher? And we need an usher with a sanitizer to stand right on this side. If you want, there's a, bo a larger bottle. Thank you. Come on up close. Now, if you want to shake hands and you feel... You need to sanitize before and after. You can do that. I'm going to ask the preachers to come after me. If you would do that, please, sir. Reverend Gore. Okay, okay. We, we just, just play for a minute. We need to wait on one. We need to wait on one preacher. He'll be, be back out in a minute. I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied
We thank God for him adding to the church. Amen. 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 And uh, it doesn't have to always be Mount Olive, but as long as it is the church of God. Amen. Our prayer is that all will come to repentance and be saved and none be, be lost. That was why Jesus died on the cross, that none would be lost. And we want to thank you for coming and being a part of the services today and witnessing to what the Word says and seeing what God is doing. Young people coming to Christ. You know, this, this this is going to eliminate some of the violence that are now taking place as we teach our young people what the Word of God says, that, that they don't end up in making bad choices. Now, we all have made some bad choices. By being adults, sometimes we think we know everything. But like the preacher said, we find out sometimes we don't know nothing. <laughs> what we thought we knew what was not worth nothing. Amen. But we thank God for his grace and it being sufficient. So we're going to ask you to just be a little patient with our young people as we prepare them for tomorrow evening. And uh, we're just thankful that they are here and they want to be a part of what's going on. And they are talented children. We have some talented children. Amen. And let us support them. So all of you who can, the banquet will be at the wedding venue right below the El Bethel Baptist Church in Macedonia. The dinner is only $10, and yours truly is the sponsor that's why we got the price down. We've been paying $35 for per plate for I don't know how many years. But with the help of this kitchen committee and these good cooks here at this church, we're going to have it so that the children can attend. You know, we have not had any children there because it's only been grown folks. But if we're going to eliminate the children in part of it, then they won't feel a part of none of it. So we want them in all of it. So write it down tomorrow evening at 6.30 at the wedding venue in Macedonia, right down past the El Bethel Baptist Church on the left. You can't miss it. There will be some balloons on the side of the road. Plus, you can see the archway where you enter there. And there's a gate where you enter it. And I'm looking for our... Preachers, their wives, our deacons, and their wives, our members, our young folks, and we're going to have a good time. I don't know about the other churches, but we're going to represent. Amen. 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 We're going to represent because we prepared to represent. Amen. So let's pray for the situation. At this time, if there are no other announcements, any other announcements? If not, our Heavenly Father, we come now thanking you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, but most of all, what our hearts have felt. And Lord, we thank you for those things that have been captured in our heart that will be brought back to our minds that we can act upon, that all will know that we are yours and you are working through us. And we'll be so careful to give your name all glory, honor, and praise. Father, keep us until we meet again on this side. If not, Lord, we know that we'll all be together in eternity. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.